What's up guys, Fury TV here, and we are back with another episode of Poker Hands. Before getting into it, I would like to ask you guys to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy our videos, as your support is allowing us to continue posting videos on a daily basis. So, <laughs> this is officially late reg finished for day 2A. Um, there's still one more period of registration for day 1B tomorrow, but for day 2B, pardon me. I guess confusing with all these numbers and letters, you know. Sure. But they are now playing out, I believe, the last six levels today. This is close. Uh, sorry to cut you off, Dem, so yeah, I would right. not be surprised. And he has put it in. You know, Steve is going to be open in lots of hands. We know this. He's going to open, you know, all his Jack 10s and stuff like this. Andres will be thrilled there when he gets snapped off to see yeah. that he is indeed flipping. I think that's fine. 15 bigs, pairs of pairs, six yeah, handed. I mean, let's go. Sure. And we, we actually have more, ec more fold equity than you think there against Steve's specific range, him being the big stack. All right, and the first two, <laughs> well, un under the gun at least in one fold. So, as you say, Andres is thrilled to find out he's in a flip when he gets he snapped. He looks happy. <laughs> 47 million chips. Five out of six players rooting for an ace or a king on this flop. I mean, it's actually a pretty huge moment, right? If, if he can hold, then all of a sudden you're, you're only one double up off the chip lead of the tournament. Yeah. That is how crazy this final table has been thus far. Oh, well, check four, five. Things looking pretty good for the pocket threes thus far. Of course, Steve can turn additional outs with a queen 10 or perhaps even pairing the board. Well, three. He does pick up different outs. Deuce oh, would get in the wheel. <laughs> For Adam, he needed a deuce earlier. This would be the most Steve O'Dwyer thing of all <laughs> Steve O'Dwyer things. Nine on the end. Andras double double, certainly back over 30 big blinds. And, well, as Zhao said, and as you said, certainly a force when he's got chips. I know, uh, reading the chat, you have one million, million chips. That's how many chips you can exactly. have tomorrow. Exactly. I've got a mil I've got 50 big blinds, mate, going into day 2B. Ex exactly 50 bigs. <laughs> and you can swan in like 15 minutes late as well. You haven't got to rush down like everyone else. You can get Obviously. to breakfast a few minutes later. Yeah. I'll do a better entrance than that pigeon Helmuth does, though, with all the <laughs> frills. Sorry, Phil. I know you're obviously watching. Oh, of course he is. Ben from the cutoff. Pocket nines. Cool. Uh, again, thinking. Can again, you? right, we, d we saw that Paul knows that he can leverage his big stack against the kind of middle stacks because they're not going to want to bust. I w it wouldn't be the worst hand selection, but he has got he has decided to fold. I say not the worst hand selection in terms of it's tough for Ben to just peel. Right. So you know having a king blocker is is pretty good in this spot. All right. We blocked some of those broadway combos, but yeah. Steve with sevens in the big well, he has an easy defend, does he not? Yeah. Forty bigs deep. Difficult to see Steve doing anything else. Hands not strong enough to three bet call and three bet folding is of course a disaster. Oh, well, eight, nine, ten. Ben flops a set, not for the first time on this final table. But it's a dangerous-looking board, as you can see. Even Steve's hand has 21% equity holding the open a straight draw. Yeah, like Ben's going to be thrilled with this, just in terms of the board texture. Although dangerous, Steve's going to continue a lot, which is good for us, right? You know, there are, are some obvious scare cards, but any 10x, any king jack, why wow, he checks back? Quite surprised. I feel like Steve has to check call a lot. Right, yeah. May even check raise some blo semi bluffs. Right, that's surprising. Obviously, uh, you know, it is a range that he has to be wary of. Yeah. And doesn't. I mean, th this is a case of, you know, he's taking balancing to the extreme. Maybe maybe we can be a little bit unbalanced when we're playing for $2 million. Maybe, just maybe, yeah. we'll just bet our stronger hands here. I'm with you, Dems. I'm with you. Steve, with a pair and a straight draw, is this. This is a hand he wants to bet himself because it's such a dangerous board. Well, he is going to. Yeah. Wow, he's going wow. to bet the par. He's gone big. Just trying to smash into these sort of, what, 8x and 9x and even 10x yeah. that Ben has checked back the flop with, right? That's what's such a brilliant uh, thing about checking here is that Ben, in general, represents a capped range. You know, even uh, like Ben can feasibly check back, like, ace 10 here for absolute sure. He's going to check. He's going to have some kings and aces check backs that can be put under a lot of pressure and a lot of runouts. And like you say, Demps, all the 9x and stuff. 
this is working out beautifully for Ben. If this board bricks out, I think Steve's going to be aware that his sevens are no good. And he may, he may look to really put max pressure on Ben here. A six is a disaster. Oh, oh. <laughs> Jack as well. Steve makes the straight. Wow. Now he's looking at this. How does he do it? It's, it's interesting spot here, right? Because Ben can have some Queen X, Queen 10, Queen 9, perhaps, the check back to yeah. flop. Uh, he could even have pocket Queens here feasibly, for sure. Right. If we, you know, if we're going to be completely balanced in this spot, we can have Queens for sure. I mean, if we're checking back a set of nines, then we should, then we will be checking back Queens. 12 nine. And he's going for value 12 million. Of course, Ben has some hands, I guess, like two pairs, jack eight, jack yeah. nine, jack 10, all might check back to flop. This is a horrible spot for Ben, isn't it? He's sort of so gross. Put himself in there. The problem is here that when Ben, uh, sorry, when Steve overbets this turn, you know, he could definitely have queen X with spades, queen X with clubs, every combination, and they are now all, they've all gotten there. So I feel like we can never turn our hand into a bluff. Like, I'm not sure we ever would anyway, but you know, right. it's not something that we can turn our hand into a bluff or anything. Well, this one's going to take Very, some very tough. This will take some thinking from Ben holding that set. It's nice. You s you, you've got the hand in your mind. How are you going to play it against an aggressive player like Steve O'Dwyer? And then the river card comes the Jack of Hearts. And suddenly, your hand is so right. much weaker. Mm, is this one he just kind of has to call with? I mean,. Um, I mean, of course, Ben is very accomplished. He's going to be running every combination and scenario through his mind. Thoughts on the size in Demps? So he's bet 40%. You know, and for, is, is Steve going to bet 40% here as a bluff? I guess he might, right? In terms of trying to look like a value bet more. Right. Ben will be thinking, does Steve ever value bet two pair? Probably not. Yeah, I think you it's, know, it's so the full, it doesn't have to bet big because you're betting straight or and checking the rest here on your so, straight mate, yeah. and bluff, so you don't have to necessarily bet as big when you're That's repping that problem. range. And Ben is pretty close to the top of his range. Of course, can yeah, have a queen card. himself. Oh, this is a torturous spot for a tolerine. It's really hard for him to have a better hand than this, though, isn't it? Other yeah, than I mean, queen X. And, and this is the problem. We're so under-repped. I promise you there's no way O'Dwyer puts us on a set here. But it doesn't really matter, right? <laughs> At this point, Steve is either trying to maneuver us off whatever our holdings are with a brick draw, or he has a straight. So tough. Oh, it is Steve's day thus far at this final table. It's a gin run out. He's changing his mind. Mm. Th I think he was going to find the fold. Think long, think well wrong. done, Ben. And that hurts. Flopper set, six yeah. hands on a final table and end up folding it. Sean it's sickens me. Uh, well, John T, of course, who does sometimes help out with the commentary, has just bought in a couple of drinks for the boys. And look at this. Sevens versus sevens. These are the fun ones. Ben opening the hijack. Off those 25 picks. Charles in the cutoff. From what we've seen, Charles will peel this hand. He, he's, you know, his most of his selections have been to call in position and s rather than three bet, which he does. Now this is interesting. Right, Charles would have three bet got in his strongest hand, so he's pretty much always falling to a squeeze, isn't he? Paul has to worry, of course, about Ben's opening range, but this looks like a pretty nice spot. Yeah, and I mean, uh, like Paul's not going to fold this hand. He was just thinking, should he overcall or should he squeeze? Paul's taken a lot of the spots today. Yeah, I think uh, what what makes Squeeze attractive here is that Ben is capable enough to uh, open wider than most of that stack depth. Right. You know, being one of the best players at the table, he has decided to peel with, and that's fine. Oh, Roger, wow, this is interesting. He does move all. I like, I like this. I really like this. I like that as well. So many chips in there already when it gets to him. You see, if he gets his three, it picks up about 12, 13 million. Honestly, Ben is hating life today. Like the last few, uh, ironically, he's he's played close to perfect. I think it, uh, we haven't seen him make any missteps. My, yeah, my my question is here. I mean, we assume Ben's going to fold. Charles will do the same. Paul then is going to be a pretty tough spot against a sixteen big three bet jam. I think the problem is when Roger shoves is that. I mean, we can see that he has that perfect blockery hand, right, to shove it in. Sorry? But he, 
in theory, he should be expected to be called maybe by like one of these players, right? You're right. Like, perhaps not. It is. I hear you though. It's going to be awkward, especially with the dead money in the pot if it does get round to Paul. It's so attractive. So he'll be uh, have to call what twenty five million ish to win forty two. Yeah. I'm not sure that Ben always folds. He, I, I he probably will. It's probably a little too low in his range to call. She has a good oh, point. No, he's Actually, going yeah, for it. sorry. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking Ben would fold, but no, of course. I mean, it's like 18 that. big blinds, you know. I think pocket nines, for example, we always call. Yeah. This is one of those spots where Ben probably is just deciding there's dead money in the pot. It's, an, it's a spot where Roger is incentivized to squeeze a little bit lighter. Exactly. And of course, like we said, the overlid's cool. And the two players behind didn't three bet, so they're probably not that strong. Probably always folding to his sure. jam. Yeah. Oh, the occasional trap. But Paul, Paul never has a big hand right ever on the bottom. Yeah, Paul can't even, have a big yeah. hand being the third in. Wow, and uh, we know that uh, Ben is drawing dead in terms of improvement to a set. Yeah. This is a pretty good spot, right? Nobody blocked Roger's whole cards. Correct. Roger is all in for his life, but Ben only about 10 million more. And as you say, if he hits, nearly impossible for Ben to get out of it. Wow, he's found the bricky flop. 9 8 5. Yeah. Can, of course, hit a 6 and end this. We're all in. We are, <laughs> we are all in. Most chilled man at the final table. Because I'm a sick man, ten of diamonds. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, look six. at six. <laughs> but does wow. give Roger that flush draw. Oh, this would be very cruel on Tolerine. Oh, ben came into this final table second in chips. One card. Diamond on the end. Oh, my goodness. That is that. Ben down to just 10 million in chips. Roger with the ginormous double up. And then some with the dead money in the pot. Up to 68 million himself. Well, Ben, going to move it in. Well, it says 10 million, but it looked like he had less than that in front of him. Uh, I think the graphic a little wrong there. I, I think he was closer to 5 million. Those red chips are worth 500,000 apiece. Oh wow! I'm so pretty. I'm pretty sure that graphic is slightly wrong. So apologies for that. So he has five bigs with uh, less than we think. Yeah, I mean, look, it's three bigs. Yeah, maybe six million, five million there in front okay. of him. So he has managed to get it in good. It is Ben at risk, but pretty close to a flip here. Once more, of course, the other players are rooting for the bigger stack. Everyone guaranteed 450,000. We crossed cross the half a million mark. If we lose one more player. Jack in the door, followed by queen five. Ben needing a king. Well, we know Ben. I, I say we know Ben. I assume Ben will be jumping over to the 250k. He might, might not be, but. You know, obviously, absolute crusher in the game. We'll be hoping, though, to perhaps get a few more hands in at this table if he can find a king. It's not to be ace on the end. Fun, guys. Thank you. Well, like you say, a shame to lose yeah, Ben, really such is. an accomplished player. Um, e even on a table like this, such a strong player. Yeah. But, as you said, everyone will be happy to get rid of. Zhao said it himself, Steve, and, uh, Perez, yeah, and, it's, and it's ace-queen a fair percentage of the time. Sure. In fact, what does Andros do with ace-queen here all the time? I mean, uh, Probably does this, yeah. Right. For 40 bigs if we're equal stacked with everyone else. I mean, it's, it's an absolute print to jam here because Roger is right. essentially never calling. And Steve should have about 90% oh. of the time we snap folding, so. Well, the rest of the players are gonna absolutely love this when they hear Steve call, cool because there's a chance of a ladder up. And whatever happens, even if yeah. Steve loses this pot, we're gonna have a monumental shift in the table dynamics. I mean, he can never fold, but I, I think Steve will be thinking here that I'm gonna be flipping a good amount. Well, this could well be, well, this will be a tournament defining pot. Yeah. So yeah, right now, we're gonna have about 150 million of the 400 million in play in this pot, and Andres's face there hates it to hear that, but he's going to love to see yeah. once more he's in a flip. He has the one hand he wanted him to have. 
Now he's dodged a few of these today. Wow, this is massive. Huh? Can Andras do it again? Get to the 150 million chip mark. Whoever wins this pot is going to be a giant step towards the champion here. A huge moment here in the 25k high roller. You wouldn't know it looking at the, their faces, <laughs> would you? <laughs> This, I mean, this pot is a seven-figure e equity, yeah. equity hand. Any way you cut it, this pot is worth over a million dollars in real money. Yeah, it's not an exaggeration. A million-dollar flip, easily. Who is it to be? <laughs> ace, three, four. Any oh, surprise, wow. Steve O'Dwyer finds that ace. <gasps> Man having a stormer of a year. Let's not jinx him just yet, though. does have to fade a nine on the turn yeah. or river. No backdoor diamonds, backdoor wheel chop. Andres Nemeth has been a force in this tournament. It needs a lot of help to get out of this one. Queen on the turn. Just a nine, or Andres will depart in fifth place. Doesn't look like he believes it's coming. You never think these ones are coming, do you? Five on the end, that is that. Well, Andrus, he had the spin up, didn't he? They gave him the, the poker gods gave him the sweat from five big blinds all the way up to a chip lead flip, but not to be. And look at that oh. stack of Steve O'Dwyer, just short of 190 million. Thank you, it's nice to know that somebody does. <laughs> well, we've already found out your family doesn't. Anyway, Whoa. Steve under the gun, 3.5 million. Whoa! Charles in the small blind, he's gonna flat Pause and pull with ace nine off in the big. What's his play going to be? Looks like it looks like he's gone for it, and I actually really like this. This is actually very similar to the very first hand of the day when I said, "Well, these guys are kind of stuck and they can't do much against Steve." Yeah. And the very first hand of the day, he three bet squeezed from the big blind. He's doing the same thing again. The first hand of four-handed play. Now this is, of course, a function of the fact that we know for a fact that Steve is going to be opening super wide, and also from what we've seen. Charles actually hasn't displayed a three-bet range at all, and to be fair with his holdings, that's been relatively right. reasonable. Yeah. But again, in this spot, typically when people peel the small, especially four-handed, his range is pretty weak. I really like this from Paul. We have a hand that doesn't flop well when we peel. Wow, Steve, he's gonna he's gonna cage him a little bit here. Wow. wow. Spicy. The other two loving this. Charles can well. Charles probably wants to see a flop, but this is too many chips, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, million this is just. Pretty simple fold. But the other two, and, and especially when you can sit back and potentially watch some fireworks, you never know, might ladder up another $300,000. I can guarantee you that that call is just, Paul, it's, the, it's probably the last thing that Paul wanted to hear. Yeah, just jam on me and exactly. I can be done with it. Like, At least if he jams, we're not like, oh, what am I gonna do? Let's see if I do a great understanding of what's going on here. Yeah. Probably because of that very first hand of the day. He knows Paul obviously squeezed him. He knows this guy's capable. Paul doesn't appear to be scared. And, well, a queen, queen, five flop. This is kind of a flop both players might feel yeah. is okay for them. Again, if we take it further into you know the kind of levels of poker, so to speak, you know Paul should just be completing a lot, right? So when he does make this squeeze, it's either going to be hands like this that are just trying to leverage the other two out of the pot, or it's going to be, you know, a very good value hand. And Steve, of course, is blocking those hands. So does Steve, therefore, just check this back? I think so. We we have enough showdown against the kind of three-bet bluffs of Paul. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Well, king on the turn. This is a card, I guess, now. Steve was pretty happy thinking, oh, I might be ahead. But this is a yeah. card he might bluff on now, sure. right? Because Paul does have some better hands that can't continue now. Like, he did have a hand, say, like. Well, yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard tens. to think. Yeah, nines and nines, kind of like a prime candidate yeah. of hands that might through it pre and are now scared. I'm also thinking about whether Paul turns this into a bluff in terms of, you know, Steve could definitely flat with eights and nines. Right. right. And, 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 and Paul has obviously all the ace kings. Although we do block nines. But yeah, and, we do exactly. And, and Steve but, never and, does. Basically. And Paul probably does still check this turn with ace king, right, and go for a, a river bet. Is that it, it, I mean, Paul doesn't necessarily give up bluffing yeah. by checking this turn, does he? If it checks through again, you can definitely bluff the river. That's true, and represent like thin value or a, or a checked king would make wow. the most sense. And look at this, Steve makes Broadway <laughs> on the end, because why not? He's Steve O'Dwyer. I mean, the problem is for Paul now is, you know, Steve always has showdown, right? Like, Steve hasn't called 
the preflop squeeze with 8-9 suited right. here. It just hasn't. So the question Paul's running through his mind is, if I bet I'm basically targeting to fold out a hand like Jack-10 mm -hmm. suited, right, which is possible that we could represent, you know, like you said, a hand like Ace king Let's put a time bank chip in. Right. He can or still, he or can try still and fold out eights or sevens, right, essentially. Can he still have a hand like ace-queen and aces king? I mean, kings are possible, right? Sure. He does have those big hands. We can have some traps. We just have to work out whether Steve has those those traps, which Steve probably bets a queen on the turn, right? I right, think. that's what I'm thinking. So, cause yeah. Pool. Unless he literally has f king queen, you know that would be a hand that uh, Steve would be right. A queen, back. a queen that blocks a king, thus yeah. thus blocks a lot of hands that can call with. Yeah, right. he is going to go for it, and I think I do like. And we can see that it, it's not going to work. He's going to have to go absolutely massive, and right, he's going about half pot. I, think, uh, I mean, he's just going to get snapped off. Yeah, of course, uh, yep. it's not going to work against a straight. Sure. And obviously, no value in raising from Steve here. He's uh, only going to no. call by better. And, and Paul can have better. He can have kings. He can have jacks. Yeah. He can have king, queen. He could have, uh, well, quad queens, of mm -hmm. course, is also possible, albeit very unlikely. Yeah, I mean, the only hand we could feasibly get value from would be ace, queen. And that is probably bet earlier in the hand. Almost definitely. And we block it too. Again, yeah, we can say this quickly, seeing it. Steve just going through the motions. Yeah. He's obviously just going to call here. We're pretty short. Yep, yeah, I mean, Paul could easily have jacks here, right? So, and any of the other traps. Well, he's just, <laughs> he is checking out the chips behind. It is another 42 million. So you say, things if you jam here, what, what are you hoping to get called by? Well, that's it. I mean, essentially, you're trying to get Ace King to hero off or trying to get a queen to call. And the only one we beat is basically his queen, unless our opponent really got out of line with a queen nine off three bet pre, which is super unlikely. Steve Edouard is pretty sick. Maybe he is thinking he can get that yeah. action. I mean, he may just know that he's good. And, and if I was going to go for a hero value jam against one player at this table and hope they make a hero call off, Paul would probably be the guy because he, he has shown a lot of heart. I don't know if, uh, Andras would have been the one before. Obviously, just busted. Yep. But th this pool definitely. Oh. Just call. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying just call, and he kind of knows. That that's the player instinct, right? Like he, he sensed that he, it would be possible to get called by worse. Right, and and Paul, like I can say, I think is the guy who could hero you off. Yeah. Not small limps. Ace five from the small. Steve with ace three in the big blind. It's quite funny. Steve's always going to raise a lot of hands from the big blind, but he wants to have some ace-x when he checks back, and this may be a good one to have. But yeah. there we go. He does check. I mean, uh, well that's less important in this particular situation because it was overrode and chip He's just going to raise a lot. That's so he doesn't it. necessarily have to have those hands. Well, he finds a three on the 10-4-3 flop pool with a gut shot straight roll to the wheel. Paul's going to be aware that you know Steve is going to raise a very high frequency when he limps. So we're interested to see if he can adjust to that as we go on. As you say, Demps, Steve's probably going to check hands like this, and he's more inclined to raise a hand like 9-4 off or something that has no post-flop playability particularly. Going to go check call, you would imagine, almost always here. Yeah, Paul, of course, with ace high. Two of us to the second pair and a gut shot straight draw. Very playable hand. Flick in the chips for the call. And there it is. Deuce on the turn. Looks safe for Steve, but in fact, gives Paul the straight. I would imagine we check. It seems, you know, it seems hard to imagine too many hands that want to semi-bluff lead this turn. That don't already have showdown, right? Like a hand like 5-4 or something is just going to check. Maybe 5-7 would be about the only one. Let's check call with a gutter and then starts to lead. All right, does go check, check. Five on the end, well. <laughs> Steve O'Dwyer, honestly. <laughs> it is the Steve O'Dwyer show. It's just, a, it's just obscene. 
Paul obviously was more ASEX here, having limped in from the small and check called that flop, right? Steve doesn't have that many ASEX because they probably check back the flop. The problem is Steve has like all the six X. Right. <laughs> right, he <laughs> really does. Like six deuce and then bets and checks the deuce on the turn. So Paul can't go huge here for that reason. Yeah. Check bet call. Seems likely. Steve. Well, he could be up against... Yeah, Steve can be pretty big here, can't he? Because... Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to think of any 6x, actually, that Paul can have, other right. than... <laughs> he's not happy. Oh, I don't know why you're that unhappy. Oh, he's fuming. <laughs> cool. Chop, chop. Action of Charles on the button. Pocket kings worthy of a raise. See if Edouard finds an ace in the big run. Contender for a flat call, but he could also just decide to move it in here against that button raise. He does move all in. Snap call, of course, from Charles. Well, a 96 million chip pot. Charles in great shape to get up to a quarter of the chips in play. Steve, of course, will still have the chip lead regardless of what happens in his hand. If he were to spike an ace, would go even further ahead in the chip counts. Well, King King Seven, that should sort it out. A little bit of overkill for Charles. And is if by magic, as he flops quad kings, we'll look at it as an ace for a rub down. I'm rejoined in the booth by Picasso. A misstep, I mean, he three bet jammed ace eight on yeah. the first hands back, and that went badly for him, of course. If he just got that through, he'd still have over 220 million. And so Paul limps in from the small with an ace eight. Steve with six, well, with ace eight, with eight nine suited. Yeah, Steve with sixes. I mean, Steve is going to raise, so the question is oh. wow. Well, I am wrong, guys. That, I find that very surprising. Right, nine, five, four, rainbow. Yeah, and for sure getting some trouble now. Yeah, pull with top pair, backdoor flush draw, Steve with well, just one overcard to his pair. What's your thoughts on that check, Damps? I'm, I'm with you. I'm surprised he didn't raise. I think uh, I, I'll just be happily raising, playing a slightly bigger pot with sixes. He gets it through, it's great because sure. his opponent has a lot of equity against sixes. If he gets action, when well, he has a pair, it's hold'em. It's pretty tough to make pairs. And I mean, there's a small chance you get Limmy raised, and it'd be pretty horrible. But you know, make make your opponent do that. We yeah, haven't, we haven't seen that happen yet. Don't be, don't be. A, you can't be too scared of that. Even then, if your opponent limps at this stack depth, I think that it's more likely that Paul would limp shove. Right. And then, you know, sixes, we get to decide. That there are some worse pairs that would limp shove, some worse, right. you know, some ace X hands, etc. I know we don't want to play an inflated pot, but the problem now is we still think we have the best hand, a very good amount. Well, that will help Steve slide down a little bit, won't he? Because some of the hands Paul checks calls, Paul check calls with are 5X and 9X. Yeah. Both of those now, of course, ahead of sixes. The straight draws, well, Steve blocks them. Yep. So he's going to give Paul more credit for a hand. We get to check back as well, and if Paul has, like, a decent ace X, he, he's, he's not going to bluff it on the river, so we can decide. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, he might as well just, we might as well go home, guys. Is there any surprise? And Paul with an interesting decision here, then. He's going to bet for value, I would say. Right, because Steve, yep. Steve does have quite a bit of 6x, six, six, doesn't he? If he's checked on the flop, he could sure. bet his 6x, 6x7, 6x3, 6x2. All would have bet the flop. I mean, Steve has plenty of 4x also that can bet small just right. to deny equity. Well, pooch. Oh, this is a very awkward spot now. Now, Steve. So how much does Steve bet? It's an interesting one. I mean, Paul could rightly think that Steve will barrel the turn with a 5, right? 
Like it would make sense to do so if our opponent somehow has a nine, they're always calling. If they have a six, seven or like a backdoor heart draw, they're always calling. I kind of favor big here for those reasons, I think. 14 .5 yep. Million. yep, this there makes a lot of sense. 14.5 million. This is so tough, so, so tough to get away for those reasons. Look, he's hating it. Obviously, Deuce 3 gets the 3 7 gets the 7 yeah. 8 gets the. Might be expecting 6 is full. Wouldn't be expecting 5x. <laughs> How's he finding this river, Mr. O'Dwyer? Really hard for full to fold this. Oh, very tough. Even, you know, a hand like 10 9, for example, would never bet this size, right? Right, this is, the, this is it, so right? So this he's is the problem. Straight, he's saying sh straight or, or yep. better, really. doesn't have trips when he checks back the turn too often. So, yeah, yeah I mean, uh, understandable call there. I think so. <laughs> that is tough. And we're drawing to some super nutted hands. Anyway, Demps, here we yeah. go. I mean, it's just it's kind of offering up the chance to bust out right there and then in that hand yeah. when you've got a hand that can make so many good times because we just make a solid hand. Oh, sure. Like, if Steve shoves, it's a disaster for us. Oh, oh no. Here we go. Sorry, Paul. Yeah, this is GG. They have the same stack. Roger opening the button pool with an easy jam from yeah. the big. Roger with the easier call holding kings. And wow. Well, whoever wins this is going to be back in the mix. And whoever loses it is either out or virtually out, as you can see. I mean, this is a massive cooler for sure. Yeah. Cannot blame Paul for this. Easy shove. Roger in great shape to get to 100 million in chips. Take this three-way effectively. Paul will be left with what, just a couple of blinds. Hmm? You have no of the like 45. Queen, queen, nine. Two clubs. Paul does have a club, so can turn some additional outs here. Jack of clubs on the turn. Here we go. He's in the race. Who doesn't love a bit of drama? Club or eight? Who doesn't love the drama? Because it's as good as it gets for Paul. How about the ten of clubs for a straight flush? Oh, seems, seems worthy of this final. Oh, a jack uh -huh. on at the end. Roger up to 98 million. Paul left with wow. just one big blind. And as you said, just a complete cooler and the way Paul's played, pretty unfair for it to end this way. I feel like it Steve makes it six million from the button. Wow, Charles, pocket queens in the big. Two big hands, three-handed. Yeah, well, this is interesting. Charles has got a big hand, ten-handed. Steve with a big hand, three-handed. I think the only thing working against Charles here is, has he three bet at all? You know, if you think about it. Right. I I'm, I'm actually don't think Charles is three bet once in this final table. Right. Never mind this spot. And uh, yeah, especially coming out of the big blind, it's a very different situation. And I think he always 26. will. Yeah. Well, at least he's gone big. Given that he's repping a very tight range, having not done it, it's it's good that Where's he's gonna. One forty, one forty five. Of course, you know, like dynamics changing with three handed. Right. You need to open up your three bet range. You feel as if Steve. Alarm bell's got to be going off a little. Don't know about you, but normally when someone doesn't three bet much, but he likes to take a flop, Steve. So I wouldn't be surprised he does call. Yeah, I mean, uh, a seven suited. Even sure. if you think, you know, guy would have to be especially tight for you not to call here. I think. Yeah. <laughs> wow, what a flop! Heart, heart. Wow. King, king, ten. Gives Steve the not flush draw. Charles, well, not the worst flop, but not the best either, of course. Steve does have some King X. See, this is where poker is the most fun. Charles, obviously, you always need to be thinking ahead in poker, as we know. We block King Queen, which is like a decent um, part of, of uh, Steve's range. Right. Ace you King know, like Steve never has Ace King, right? Yeah. So he's just going to put it in. So when Steve calls here, which we know he will, I don't think Steve will raise here. It doesn't really accomplish too much. We can bluff off worse hands, and even hands that beat us a little later in this hand. Right. But like the the, the most interesting street is going to be the turn here, d depending on what comes. Steve will always call. He does. 
This is where Charles needs to keep a cool head and be aware of what the range of his opponent is likely to look like. Right, of course, normally Queen Jack would be a concern, but having two queens exactly. in is not an issue. So when you know your opponent doesn't have ace-king, you know your opponent is unlikely to have king-queen because we have it. So the, m the biggest concern is a hand like king-jack. And when you think about it, it's not that, you know, not that often that that's the case. I don't mind this. I was going to say, Charles is going to check his range here pretty much, I think so. You know, if you bet and you get shoved on, it's a disaster. We can check and call and evaluate rivers. Steve should never really value bet, excuse me, value bet a 10 twice. Right, Steve's value hands here would, of course, be a king. Yeah. Um, maybe a hand like nines. I don't think it's even really a concern, just because Steve probably shoves pre, right, at this stack depth. Right, okay. So it's just it's just the king, like the sure. king, queen, king, jack, and maybe queen, jack. Well, Charles improves to a straight on the river. I'll give him a nice, warm feeling. Like The interesting thing here is that Charles will be thinking that Steve has a 10 a lot, right? When it goes, the action proceeds like it has. Right. So if we check, our opponent will just always check back. So the interesting thing here is what should we do to try and maximize money in this pot? Okay. Like when we lead, do we have bluffs? But will, do we ever check that hoping Steve turns a 10 into a bluff? Is that... Ex well, like the, this is the problem. When okay. we bet, our opponent normally folds a ten. A th well, not normally, but you know what I mean. Yeah. And when like we check, our opponent checks, so it's pretty tough. But Charles is going to give he Steve a chance to enter. I kind of like it. Now, of course, the problem with this is Steve obviously beats just the Rhino bluffs if Charles has a hand like six, seven suited yep. or whatever. He doesn't need to bluff. He could try to fold out a jack, but it's tough to find them. Right. Maybe ace, ace jack, jack, right, would be the one, but we do block it. And we block, f yeah. Well, Charles now the chip leader. I think I like the way they both play the hand, to be honest. Look at that, that Pretty reaction. Cool. Steve knows if it came a heart, he may have got the lot. And, I mean, you go about five years ago, people would be think you're crazy if the card off open and you flat <laughs> King Jack off from the yeah. small. They're like, what are you doing? Why 100%. You putting King Jack off from the small, you idiot. Like, what a fish. So what's going to happen eventually, we're just going to go back to the real old school and what? just everyone 4x is free. I, and that's I, it. That's, I, that's it. And I kind of envisage a situation where we're just like open jamming hands from huge stacks. <laughs> you know? And you just decide, can I call off? Who's whistling? I'm loving this. Who else? But Mr. Tesco. Young Roger. The so musician. Steve limped. Roger is going to go ahead and bet for value for sure. Steve won't be going anywhere here with an overcard and a gut shot to the nuts. Yeah, and that important club in hand. Yep. Could even check raise here, I guess. But it's so small, though. Yeah. The problem with the check raise is, like, how much of a super strong range we would rep. This is interesting. Right. Will Roger find the second barrel holding top pair? A lot of Steve's hands do continue here, right? Like the yeah. hand he has. I actually think that we should bet turn here, and we can decide, River, whether we want to go super thin. We want to kind of, you know, continue to get slightly worse hands to continue in the hand, deny equity to these hands, and just get value from our 10. He's gone 7 into 12. It's tough for Steve to have too many better 10s, I think. Right. He does have that 8x, yeah. 9x. And we block a hand like 6, 7, right, which could feasibly trump us, which is always good. Probably just goes check call, which it does. Interesting to see what happens on a blank. Wow, and see, Steve might see that as a blank. Yeah, that very interesting. If he was ahead before, he's still ahead. That is the point. I mean, Steve will check, and the question is, does he give Roger credit for a 10? This is tough. <laughs> this is very tough. Roger's got to put Steve on what? Some misdraws or yeah. a 9x or 8x, so... His, he can bet pretty big here, yeah. can't he? Yeah, I mean, you basically might as well go big. Oh, he's gone small. Ah, That's always getting I mean, called. he's never folding this. You can beat some hands, like a weaker <laughs> nine, perhaps. Well, <laughs> I'll stick with the name. Michael, congrats, buddy. Make it into something special, buddy. So, Steve <laughs> on the button, putting his chips to good work. Very standard, three-handed. Had like eight, nine off. May not look like much, but we can for sure open. 
Expect Charles to defend with the suited one gap or the 7 5 of clubs. King 7 4 2 hearts. So, from what we've seen from Steve so far, he's C bet heavy, which makes a lot of sense from the button. He does have a bunch of back doors. He can fold out many better hands with nine high. I, I expect did. Steve to bet. This is a great hand to see bet with, of the, sure. of the no pair, no draw kind of hands. And like he goes big, and I, and I, I like that. You know, it may not be to everyone's taste always to like go the max pressure route, but Steve has shown, you know, especially when big money is on the line, if you put max pressure on your opponent, it can bear fruit. You know, like Charles, even with a seven, I don't expect him to fold, but you can never be comfortable here, right? Oh. You're always f always thinking there are a lot of bad cards for my hand. That's not one of them. Oh, that's a great card for Charles. Undercard to a seven and improves him to a gut shot straight draw. And as we were saying, like Steve's obviously larger C-bet sizing the flop does knock out a lot of the weaker hands, so therefore it's hard for him to dial barrel these because his opponent does have much stronger hands than if he had bet small on the flop. Absolutely, and I, I actually don't mind that in many respects. Of course, with a hand like 8-9 off suit, we do have some turns that we could double barrel. But when... Oh, wow, he is going to go for it, though. I'm sort of surprised, Dems. And Charles this surely... This is tough. Well, I mean, it would be tough without the gut shot draw. With the gut shot draw, surely has to call. Although it is a big bet. Sure, but you know, like with the in-game dynamic, Steve is betting what two thirds pot, twenty-three million into thirty-nine. I mean, it's easy for us to say it, right? Okay, let's go ahead and peel. But if we think that we're already in bad shape, uh, you are exactly right. Charles calling quickly. There are some hands you're going to call the time with and fold the river with. This seems to be perfect. Now, this is the Steve O'Dwyer show nine river. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. It's just, it's just, it's just the way it goes. Amazing. This will go check, 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 check. 85 million going to Steve. Seven. Wow. Eight. <laughs> He's almost embarrassed. Steve O'Dwyer retakes the chip lead, pulling in an 85 million chip pot with a rivered second oh, pair. Such a massive swing, you know. Every. <laughs> it's been great, to be fair. It's been compulsive oh, viewing this evening, guys. Hope you'll stay with us to the end. Roger I'm limping at the small with 8-6. Charles checking a6 in the big. Obviously a hand he didn't want to raise and get faced with a jam. Yeah. Somewhat interesting at this stack depth. You know, Roger's getting into that very awkward stack size of sort of 21 to 22 bigs, which kind of makes raising a little more enticing for Charles, I think. But he does elect to check. see if Roger decides to nibble at this pot. He really should, I think. That's a good card for him to elect to bluff. If we're going to limp this hand, the only way to win is to put a small bet on the river. Yeah, he knows it. Even 4 to 5k here, we can comfortably represent a hand like King High here. I really like this. And very hard Charles to call this, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of our pure bluffs would have bet earlier in the right. hand. 8-9... Seven, eight, hands like this would have bet earlier. Any spade combos that did not have a pair would have bet the turn. Three, four, four, six, all of these type of hands would have led turn. You got me sold. <laughs> yes. I really up many hands. Wow, look well. how good he is. Look at this. Wow. That's when you know you're really good at the game. That's nice when you make a river call with a side and your opponent doesn't even turn the cards over. You're like, phew. I mean, like I'd expect to see Charles defend. He's been doing a lot of three betting, and uh, this stack death makes sense to just defend. Eight, eight, deuce the flop. And well, we see, we've seen we've seen it all day, really. A really high bet, high C bet frequency from all players, but Steve yeah. Edouard included. So will he fire here? No, he doesn't. This is perhaps a more standard line holding a hand like this, right? 
checkpoints. Oh, absolutely. Something. I mean, Steve's going to think that his hand's good a lot of the time. His opponent's going to three bet. The good ace is a very high percent. Right. So we have close to the top of our king high range. This will also go check, check, I think. Steve may actually elect a protection bet, thinking he has the best hand, but probably checks. No, he is going to do exactly what I suggested. All right, so we'll go small, won't he? And there it is. Yeah. Just over, well, exactly one and a half big blinds, in fact. I mean, Charles will call here. It's We have way too strong a holding to fold. We beat everything that is not a better race high, normally. <coughs> And unless a player improves, this normally goes check, check, river. <laughs> I mean, you know. It's just guys, not fair at this point, is it? It really is not fair. Obviously, a clear value bet now for Steve. The question is sizing, right? Because Charles has not represented really any strength throughout this hand. If Steve puts Charles on a hand like a flush, which is not impossible could certainly have a hand like a queen high flush that check calls turn with the right. intention of doing something. From what we've seen of Steve, I think he probably goes on a like maybe half pot here. Yep. And that's just one of the hands Charles calls a turn when has to fold, isn't it? Like yeah, you say, it doesn't, so. doesn't have a whole lot of ace highs anyway that reaches the turn, so. Yeah, I mean, for Steve to be bluffing here, he, we need him to have king nine, hands like this, queen jack. They may even bet the flop, right? Right. So That's the point. Is yeah, there aren't that many bluffs he has. Very difficult here to just call it off. <coughs> wow. It does call. Mm, well, Charles' <sighs> face says it all. Steve has been getting there in these spots. It must be said. We bet everything here, and honestly, this is a great candidate because. The big blind has is shorter than Charles. Right. You get to put three hundred thousand dollars of real money pressure on him. Personally, I would love to see a three bet here. Like you can basically go, you can go small, seventeen to eighteen k here. Well, he does. He has a just flat. flat. But yeah, I think you're right. You can really leverage that yeah. stack situation. Obviously, flatting is completely fine. Just seems like a good spot, you know, to really make Charles shove. Queen, of Jack, course. seven. So Steve O'Dwyer for the first time tonight, flopping top pair. <laughs> I jest, of course. Usually he has a full house. Charles with second pair. And I uh, would like to see a check back. Right. Just, you it's know, even it's theoretically. This yeah, is it's, good it's not a vulnerable hand, is it? You can check this back and... Uh, sure. I mean, it's just a terrible turn because now Steve's semi-bluffs, we have to call. Steve should lead here, I think, with close to 100% frequency. Get value from our queen. Protect against the king and an ace. Our opponent is jack x heavy when they check back flop. If they do have showdown, right? Yeah, the showdowns are some ace highs, some jack x, yeah. maybe some some pocket pairs. It's just so like eights, tough. nines, tens. I mean, if we fold here, we're just overfolding massively. I think that Charles must call turn. See what happens on the river. And there's Steve sizing up as you keep pointing out. Yeah, ten into seventeen. This is just extremely tough. Got a call. <laughs> Every time. The perfect river. Yep, clear value bet now for Steve. We can bet fold comfortably here, you know, if our opponent somehow jams on us. He's super, I mean, it's almost impossible for an opponent to bluff. And what sizing do we like here? We're targeting a lot of missed draws as well, right? That's yeah, I, I mean, if we're targeting showdown and missed bluffs, then smaller should certainly be the case. If we if we somehow know our opponent has a missed draw, we could check. I don't think that's the case here that often. Our opponent normally bets a draw on, flop, on the flop, I think. You know, like a good diamond draw, you'd expect Charles to bet the flop. Right. Even a hand like 9-10, right? He probably bets the flop if he's going to bet. So you're thinking Charles has a lot of jack X in this range, so sure. hence Steve going a little bit bigger. Yep. Yeah, you know what? I guess if we're going to bet, 
It, I mean, it sort of depends. It, it depends on how believable we are to have a misdraw in the spot, right. essentially. And how many times is Charles going to call a river with a reasonable bluff catcher and see yeah, a hand I mean, before it really he starts? Yeah, I mean, as well. I mean, it's happened so many times, and eventually you, you end up folding. Yeah. I mean, I think here if we bet, for example, 12 million, we probably get called every time. But if, if Steve is sure that Charles has a hand exactly like he has, then sizing up can be good because you, you can think you're getting exploited. But like, what are Steve's misdraws? Like, 9 10 suited, King 10. Steve could feasibly 3 bet Ace 10 here for sure and just right. shove. Probably never has that hand, never has Ace King. So, Steve's misdraws are basically 9 10, King 10. Right, and some diamond combos, right? Sure. And Charles blocks yep. none of those, so it does make the call. You can certainly understand it. And just once more, Steve's river value bet gets paid off. And look at this, passing the 300 million yep. chip mark. This might be one that he gives up. Huh? Roger with the same hand he folded from no, the big one. Well, oh. here we go. It's He's snap cool. And, well, Charles is at risk, but Roger with only a few big blinds more. Blinds versus queen seven Tell in the rail. Well, he has quite a loud and large rail. We popped out and saw them on the break. He is at risk. Like I say, only 13 million less than Roger. Oh, <laughs> and that face says it all. Queen 10-10. Queen ten. Wow. Roger taking the lead. Charles needs a nine. There oh, is look the at rail. that rail. It's quite beautiful rail. Better than most poker rails queen I've seen. Your queen seven off. It's not going to be any consolation, though. No. Julie Neuf, your queen seven off. Queen I flop. It's given the translation. French. The ladies look gutted. See Sam Schultz here <laughs> and Pascal Francois <laughs> on the rail. Jack for a sweat. Yeah, Jack for the sweat. Ooh, that's a sweat. Eight for a sweat. Jack or nine would now do the business. And brings a smile to his face. Up to four houses. Six outs. Yep, he is right. Six outs. Heading to the river. Will this be the end of Charles? It Six is. on the end. Well... He put in a yeah. pretty strong performance today on this final table. <coughs> Just ran into the buzzsaw that was Steve Edouard toward the end there, losing yeah. multiple pots to him at showdown. Wow, what a hand we have here. Steve with kings, Roger with queens. Could this be it? Unbelievable setup. Seven million the raise from Roger. Steve making it 21 million to play. Just the question now for Roger, whether he wants to slow play these queens or make the move now. I'd imagine, heads up, he will take the slow play route. Cool here. Good to see the pot nice. up to 42. He does move all in. Steve, snap calls. Kings versus Queens yeah. doesn't get much colder than that. I had a queen before. This heads up <laughs> match could be over in just a few hands. See by Dwyer, it's good to cold deck these guys. <laughs> might have just yourself. For the last hour. <laughs> yeah, that was a rookie mistake. Yeah. That was a, that was a rookie mistake. <laughs> I feel pretty good about this one. <laughs> Roger yeah, says I mean, he feels good. It, I bought it on myself. This one's all on you. Roger feels good about it, but he does need a queen. A four to one dog. An ace queen nine. There it is. <laughs> yeah, really Steve needs a king there, running spades or running straight. Five of diamonds on the turn. Just the king will do it for Steve O'Dwyer. Otherwise, Roger suddenly takes the lead in this heads-up battle that started as a 4-1 to underdog just a few hands ago. He 
He's on the end. Does the trick for Roger. That is how quickly things can change. Heads up, hold him. Buckle up. We're in for a long heads up match now. Styles, and as you say, we're seeing lots of hands. You expect to see this go raise and call. Nothing worse than seeing two tankers play heads up. This quite the opposite. Fast paced action, and these guys are throwing punches. Yep. Ace. Something that's uh, pretty. Sorry, Damps didn't mean to interrupt you. Something that's quite refreshing. We haven't seen one limp heads up. It's kind of a yeah, It's kind of a throwback. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of raising, a lot of free betting. The question is, does Steve feel his hand has enough showdown? Obviously, as the initial aggressor, we can bet a lot. Well, he's basically a gut shot, straight draw, and the nine high flush draw here. But Roger with it's top pair. Great pair. turn for Roger. And the nut flush draw in much better spot. With the fact he has ace of clubs. This is interesting. Right, this is probably the, the best ace to check again, isn't it? He does decide to sure. bet. I'm thinking more in terms of Steve's holding here. Our right. opponent shouldn't have that many good aces. We do have a gut shot to the right. nut straight. And also we have the nine of clubs, which is pretty important. If we are behind to a hand like randomly queen 10 or something like this, we can still peel. I would expect him to call. I was about to say, so, about to say, so this makes it, everything you're saying makes it a prime candidate to raise, sure. isn't it? We block the straight, Yep. we block the flush. Our hand might be ahead, but it's pretty much too weak to call. I actually really like this from Steve. Of course, this Basically, is from what we just discussed, he blocks the best straight, he blocks some flushes. Very quick call from Roger. As you'd expect, of course, with yeah. that perfect candidate to call here. If we do see a club, this is going to be interesting. Well, does Steve follow through? He has to know that his hand is no good. Like, there are no combinations that Roger leads and calls that don't beat a pair of nines. Right. I mean, it would literally have to be the king of clubs with a four, five, six, seven, etc. Sixty. Wow! I mean, this is strong, strong. Poker Sixty from Steve. million chips in a seven-four, and as you've pointed out very quick wow. once again, these guys are playing fast. The thing about this bet, the thing I love the most, is it's super believable. Yeah, like, like we can easily have a hand. Lap. I mean, obviously we have the ace of clubs, so he never has the nut flush, but we we can have a hand like king nine of clubs that decided to check back flop. Right, this is it's the thing. Certainly feasible. Players these days are so much more balanced in their check backs that he sure. can have flushes, can have king jack. Those, there's plenty of club and straight combos that would check back turn wow. and go. Wow, like the, the guys are playing some great poker. I and Steve, Steve does the flip back look at his cards as if he had a big hand. They're in the store of, you know, Poker Dynamics, the, the ace is a very bad card in terms of him tripling. Steve raising the button, 5-6 off. Roger defends king 8 and finds king wow. 6 deuce. Now this could get interesting. Steve. Now like I would expect Steve to bet. This is one interesting thing in poker. People don't tend to incorporate a check raise in here, right? Like normally when you check raise these spots, we're sort of polar to like two pair kind of hands or bluffs. I would love to see a check raise here because it, it won't make a lot of sense to Steve. And here we go. So This is nice. You called it exactly. It's true though, right? Like it's one of these spots where people don't tend to check raise a king. They will check call a lot. And now all of a sudden Steve's going to be thinking, okay, why are you check raising? You... You don't have a really, really good king. You would three bet me pre. Yeah, I mean, this makes absolute sense that you take one off. Right. He has to continue with a six and a king here. Definitely. He's on the turn now again. This is super interesting now. Because a lot of Steve's float range is an ace high. Right. Steve right? can bet ace high and call a check raise here of because course. the race makes a little sense. So he can have hit that ace. It's not like a, some scenarios where it more like a brick this one is definitely possible the thing about this is when roger check raises we have to think about his theoretical wow bluffs. steve yeah betting here now is this 
Is this a case you think he's betting because he wants to protect a six? No, I actually think this is more, although I'm looking at the sizing and it's kind of intriguing. He's betting just under a third of the pot. Yeah. So when we bet here, we do look to deny equity to two random cards, like a three, four, a four, five, etc. This is a great card for Roger, obviously. Surely this, yeah. I, mean, I, I feel like Steve was just betting some kind of block bet you think on the turn. I, did, I mean, he's setting. I, I can't see him setting up for a big river bet. Oh no, sure. Like, I mean, especially on this precise river, it's. Wow! Wow! wow. Steve. And it's so hard to be bluffing. It really is. This is what are his natural bluffs? If he floats the flop, there are there are he has none. ace x. There are none. Or he has a gut shot draw. That's it. I mean, we can we can shove king queen for value also. Yeah. Wow. This is why Steve O'Dwyer is yeah. Steve O'Dwyer. This is as good as it gets, guys. Anybody who is railing us oh. at this <laughs> wee small hours for us in the Bahamas, that is sick from O'Dwyer. I was saying he should just check back this six on the turn when he's battle for protection to get to showdown. Instead, he's decided he can make a king fold, despite it coming ace-ace. I think the problem is that when we bet turn and our opponent calls, they have, they're have they so heavily weighted to right. a king. Right? Like, they need to have three, four of clubs or something, and that might even randomly That's going to barrel, barrel the turn, yeah, of exactly. course. Exactly. Having so check raise the flop. So, yeah, you're right. He is so narrowly down to king X. Sure. And if possible, he could have a hand like... Oh, what a play. Wow, that, like, I think it... Oof. Let, let's see if uh, Roger can work this out. Oh. I mean, in Roger's mind, he needs Steve to be floating with like queen jack of spades or something or something right, right most likely so there are as a bluff yeah, holding yeah queen jack of clubs maybe with a barrel the turn of course but yeah you, he just has to have so many bluffs for this to be oh this is what i mean about the time bank thing right if roger time banks out here i'm super against this well roger did such a weird, uh, not weird, but unorthodox check raise on oh, the like flop with King up. Oh, he's found yeah. the call. What and a good Steve call. And Steve with a grin. Great call from Roger. And the chip stacks swip around. Swip around? Switch around. Wow. Big moment in this millions world. Heads up. Table. We are down to just two. And what a great hand that was just before the break. Roger Tesca picking off the all-in bluff of Steve O'Dwyer on the river. And it has given him a two to one chip lead as we head into the two million, four million level. That's what these guys are playing for. Each has locked up $1.3 million. But our champion will walk away with two million. Charles Le Boissonnet finished in third for one million. Paul Teshi in fourth for 700,000. Andres has work cut out. He wants to take that thing home with him. Interesting spot here. There's. You know, some schools have thought we could limp shove this type of hand at 30 big blinds in depth. Wow! Whoa! Roger just moves all in. I don't think we can fold. We never. W I don't think we three bet shove a better hand at this speed. Yeah, he's gonna call. He calls. Yeah. Wow! He, he, he has to call. Like. Roger's gonna be shocked to find out what great shape he's in. Is a tiny. Wow, like Roger's just decided he's just gonna rifle it in. <laughs> Roger wants to play big wow. pots. Wow! That was so fast, you know. Like, like I don't think we ever shove a better pair this right. quickly. So Steve, juicing. Wow, this could be it. <laughs> it was a light end, yeah. Well, this could be it. It's either it or a flip in stacks. Steve coming into this pot as a two to one underdog. Fifty fifty to double Look up. Look at the percentages, guys. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> eight four deuce, Roger pairs wow, that eight. Wow, just and like that. We can start moving that trophy a lot closer oh to his seat. Goodness, just has to fade a five or runner, runner. He's help. been so chilled the whole time, and he just three bet rifles thirty bigs. Queen on the turn, things are a lot nicer now. There are a lot of cards that could have given Steve extra outs. That was not one of them. Well, I can't believe how quickly this has happened. That's just like. Blow my mind. Here we go. Two outs for Steve or it's game over. And it's Tesca's world. Tesca's world. Look at Here this. we go. Three, oh! Three on the river. That is not what Steve needed. Roger Tesca, as quick as that, 
is your Millions World Champion. Quite incredible heads up match. Wow. These guys threw punch after punch at each other. Steve O'Dwyer, well, for most of this five on the table, was in control. But is he who finishes runner up this time? And well, he doesn't look too disappointed. Of course, $1.3 million, the consolation prize. And well, he had, you know, he picked up two titles at the last Millions event. So maybe he can let this one go. Ah, uh, it's going to be.